to cry sometimes. Lord have mercy. I laid awake at night. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. Oh, Lord. Jesus, he will fix it. Fix it all after a while. I'm going to say it again. Trouble in my way. Life may bring us some heavy burdens, but Jesus will fix it. Oh, thank the Lord this morning. We'd like to thank you for tuning in one more time to G-Box Ministries. Come on, give my wife a great big hand, Miss Gail Box, our producer, always doing a great job. We thank you for tuning in one more Sunday. Uh, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. We're going to go right to our prayer list. Uh, Miss Dorothy Palmer of Las Vegas, we're praying for you and we're praying for Miss Gail Baker, and we're praying for Robert Kraft. We're praying for Bishop Johnny Jones of Las Vegas. We're praying for the entire Box family as we make preparation to journey to Texas uh, this morning. We'll all be flying down to Texas. Some of us left on yesterday, but uh, we'll be flying down to Texas. The Box family and Jackson family will be flying to Texas this morning uh, to eulogize our uncle. Uncle Dave Box Sr., Pastor Dave Box, uh, his service will be on Monday morning. And uh, we ask in your prayers as we all journey down 
to Houston, Texas. We're praying for Gregory Garcia, who had heart surgery on Saturday. Uh, he's out of San Diego. Mr. Garcia, we're praying for you, sir. And we're praying for uh, Quillar West Marlin, uh, a good friend of ours over at the New Commandment Baptist Church. We're praying for you, Quillar, and we're praying for Mother Watkins. Mother Watkins, we're always praying for you, and we're praying for the Wat uh, Watson. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we're praying for the Walton and Tums Thomas family and the loss of Martha Thomas. We're praying for you all. Uh, that's the Walton and Thomas family. We're praying for you and the loss of your sister-in-law. We're praying for you. And then we want to say thank you to Miss Essie Keys for all that you're doing down there in Houston to help our family down there. We thank you for what you're doing for us. And we, uh, we just want to say thank you uh, for being family and being a good friend to us. We thank you. Let us pray for all of you down in Texas. Reggie, uh, we want to say thank you, sir, for what you're doing for us. And we just say thank you to all of our good friends. Nick Norris, uh, we thank you, sir, uh, down in Louisiana. We want to say thank you to Mr. Nick Norris for all that you do. And we just have so many friends. God has been so good to us. And Nick and Eileen in Texas, we want to say thank you to you all as well. Let us pray. Father God, we come. We want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, Father. We thank you, Father, for keeping our family, Father. We ask that you watch over uh, our auntie, Father, Anna Lee and Carolyn, Father, as they prepare to lay our Uncle Dave to rest, Father. Father God, give them strength, Father. Let them know that you didn't bring them this far to leave them. Father God, let us go there, Father, and Put our arms around them. Let them know that we love them and that we, we're riding with them in this uh, time of sorrow, Father. Father God, bless us all, Father, as we go. Father God, touch every airplane. Hold it up in the air, Father. Let us go there safely and land, Father, safely and come back, Father, just like we left. Father God, we ask that you bless every name on this prayer list, Father. And then, Father, there are some names that we may have not called. But, Father God, let them know, Father, that you haven't forgotten them. You know every hair on our head, Father God. And we know, Father, you know every name. Bless right now in Jesus' name, Father. Touch right now. Bless every pastor and every ministry that's proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord and King of Kings today, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Father, in our life, Father. Father, bless this ministry, G-Box ministry, Father, me and my wife, as we come together and proclaim your name, Father, as the Christ and as our Savior. We just want to say thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're doing, Father. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. Bless my grandchildren, Father, Father Nunu, and, and all, all my grandchildren, Azari and Ava, and, and Father, bless them, Father, right now, Father, Father uh, uh, Amir, Father, and my daughter, Father Deidre. Touch them all right now, Father. Keep them in your care, Father. We just want to say thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're doing. Father God, we bless your name. We give you all the glory and all the power and all the honor. Father God, bless right now like nobody else can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless your name today. We thank God for all of you that have tuned in to this ministry today. Uh, if you have your Bibles today, we're going to be reading from the Good News Bible today, but you can follow along in the King James. We're going to be reading from the Good News Bible. If you have your Bible, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. We're going to be dealing with when God say no today. That's uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. And it reads like this. But to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of many wonderful things I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment which act as Satan's manager to messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. 
But the answer was, my grace is all you need. For my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses. In order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, the doers, and most of all those that do his word. Um, uh, for a subject today, there is, there is going to be times when God says no. There is going to be times when God says no. We must know that there is going to be times when God says no. We like to think that all the time everything is yes, yes, yes with God. But there is going to be times when God has to tell us no. In this passage, he told Paul no uh, to Paul, Paul's request. Paul wanted God to remove the thorn out of his flesh. And God, he went to God three times. And God told Paul no. He said, my grace is sufficient. In this scripture, Paul was dealing with a situation. The Bible says he had a thorn in his side, something that he just couldn't get rid of. He went to God for help because he knew that Jesus couldn't fix it. It couldn't be done. When he presented his case to Jesus, Jesus told him, my grace is sufficient. If you study this, it was to keep him from being proud, uh, which tells me that sometime you just have to say no. Uh, it was to keep Paul from being proud. If you really study this whole uh, uh, understanding of this thorn in Paul's flesh, Paul, the Bible said proud. Paul was, he didn't want Paul to be puffed up. Uh, Paul wrote a third of the Bible. Paul could have became conceited. Paul could have became uh, uh, really uh, arrogant uh, because he knew so much. He was so uh, smart in, in, in what he knew in, in teaching about Christ. And God had to God had to allow a certain thing to happen to Paul to keep Paul uh, 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 at a certain level because Paul would have thought uh, too much of himself. You know, like people used to say about Kobe Bryant, great men that had uh, great ability. Uh, they used to say this about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was arrogant because of the way he could play or Michael Jordan or others that was uh, uh, really strong in their field. People didn't like them because they were strong in what they knew to do. And this is the way Paul was. People, uh, God gave Paul a thorn in his flesh. Uh, he allowed Satan to keep Paul at bay because he didn't want Paul to become puffed up. Uh, the word proud means to be puffed up, to be arrogant. He didn't want Paul to become arrogant. So he left the thorn in Paul's flesh so that Paul could stay humble. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, uh, we have to allow uh, people to be who they are. A lot of times we want people to do things our way and God have another way for them. People will use you up to draw all from you that they can. They will come to you until they use you up. And sometimes God wants them to go through things a certain way. So you have to be careful intervening in God's work. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, a lot of times we want to help everybody. And some things God don't want helped. He don't want you to remove this or remove that. Some things are in place uh, with certain people for a reason. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm like that. I like to help everybody. My wife, my wife is like that. I tell her all the time, you can't help every wounded bird that you see. I wish I had somebody this morning that understood what I'm talking about. You, you, you can't save everybody. And when I say save, I'm not talking about spiritually. I'm talking about sometimes you just can't save everybody. You can't, you can't clothe everybody. You can't give everybody your money. You can't give everybody your advice. You, you can't, you can't just be there for everybody. Sometimes you have to let people go to Christ for themselves. Sometimes you, you, you just have to let people find their own way. We're, we're to plant the seed and let God do the rest. You know, we, we can't plant the seed and come by every day and 
fertilizer and then every day you come by and you got the water hose, you water in the seed. That's not what God told us to do. We are seed planters. Yeah, you have to plant the seed and sometimes you plant the seed and you move on. God will do the rest. But we, we as Christians, we have to remember our role sometimes. It's not your role to stand there and, and, and make sure that that seed grow up to become this big, beautiful tree. God will take care of the rest. Trust the process. Hallelujah, somebody. I wish I had a prayer in church to talk to today. I, I realize that uh, I can't save everybody. Uh, you have to let people do some things for themselves because maybe you're in God's way. Have you ever thought about that? You could be in God's way. Uh, so God told Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient. God's grace, we all have a right to God's grace. God's grace is sufficient. Everybody have a right to the grace of God. You have a right to God's grace. I have a right to God's grace. Everybody have a right to God's grace, but it's not for us to, to do God's job. Let God be God and you be you. Sometimes you have to just plant the seed and let them go. Hallelujah, somebody. People will use you until they can't use nobody else. And then when they use you, they'll find a way to use somebody else. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody this morning that know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah, somebody. I come to tell you that it's okay to say no. God said no. He told Paul, no, Paul. Three times, not one time. He told Paul three times, I'm not going to remove the thorn from your flesh. Yeah, he, it was for a reason. He, he didn't want Paul to become arrogant. He didn't want Paul to become beside himself. Sometimes, uh, this is why God haven't made some people wealthy because you ever seen people, time they get a little something, they get beside themselves. Uh, I always wondered why everybody can't sing and, and it was because if, if God would have gave everybody a voice, some people would get beside themselves. Some people wouldn't use that voice for the glory of God. Soon they sing in the church choir now, but if they had a real good voice like Michael Jackson, uh, they would leave the church choir. They would leave the church and forget all about God. So God can't use everybody to do certain things. There are some people that just get beside themselves. So therefore, God didn't use everybody to be rich. Everybody don't know how to handle having money. Everybody don't know how to handle. Have you ever seen somebody have a, a, a raggedy car, but as soon as they get a, a decent car, they don't know you no more. That seems like that car just don't turn down your street no more because they got a new car. Or, or when they had a raggedy car, it was okay for you to ride in it. But now that they got a nice new car, you can't ride no more. <laughs> God just can't bless everybody. He just can't. He just can't. He just can't. Sometimes God has to say no. And sometimes you have to learn how to say no. I have, I've seen it. I've seen it. Have you ever had uh, to say no to somebody? And the first thing they tell you is that you're supposed to be a Christian. Those are the kind of people that you have to cut off. They too busy watching what you supposed to be. What are you supposed to be? You watching me? Are you? What are you supposed to be? Why are you watching me and I'm supposed to be a Christian? What are you supposed to be? Why are you always coming to me as if I'm your source? I'm a child of God. You know, why don't you learn who the king of kings really is so you don't have to come to me? The same person that's blessing me can bless you. Come on, somebody. You're supposed to be a Christian. All that is, is a way to, to use tactic on you, to get on your good side, to get what you got. Hallelujah, somebody. God wanted Paul to stay under grace. He said, my grace can handle it. When you have to say no, 
you allow one to activate his own faith. Sometimes you have to say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God had to say no. He had to tell Paul no three times. Sometimes you just have to say no. I wish I had somebody that knew what I was talking about. A man once said, if you, if you teach a man how to fish, he eats every day. But if you buy him some fish, he eats one day. So it'd be better to teach a man how to fish because if you teach him how to fish, he will feed himself every day. But if you buy him some fish, uh, he eat one day or he always looking for you to feed him. But, but I'm here to tell you that one should learn how to feed himself. I come to tell you, sometimes you just have to say no. God wants us to love each other, but he wants us to lean on him not each other. He don't want us to lean on each other for everything all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't want us to lean on uh, uh, each other all the time. Jesus said in Philippians 9, I'm, I'm sorry, he said in Philippians 4.19, I will supply all your needs. He, he will supply all your needs. It's not for me or you to supply all our needs or each other's needs. It's not for us to do that. He said he will supply all your needs. Yeah, yeah. All we have to do is trust God and live in faith and he will supply all your needs. Yeah, your needs are not my responsibility, nor the church's responsibilities. It's, it's God's responsibility. God said, I will supply all your needs. Hallelujah, somebody. Then in Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians 3.10 says, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. That's what the Bible says in Thessalonians. Uh, Second Thessalonians 3.10 says, if a man don't work, he shall not eat. Every man has to work. You have to work if you want to eat. I work, you work, everybody work. That's how we have to eat. There is no free ride for nobody. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody ought to say Amen. Sometimes you have to say no without feeling guilty or of your decision because as a Christian, our Lord and Savior said he will supply our every need. Now, it's good to show love. It's good to give. The Bible said it's more blessed to give than receive, but you can't give everything. You have to have something for yourself, and people have to do something for themselves. Jesus told Paul, my grace is sufficient. No one has the right to hold you accountable for their needs. Hallelujah, somebody. Sometimes you just have to say no. God said, I will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I serve a God that can do anything but fail. He can supply. He can supply. He will supply. Sometimes we have to get out of certain people's way and let God do what he needs to do. Sometimes you can be moving too quick. Sometimes you have to stop and be silent and watch God work. Trust the process. God don't want you to rescue everybody. God don't want you to move on everything. Sometimes God wants you to stop and let him be what he needs to be. Sometimes God wants people to learn a certain lesson. Sometimes you just have to say no. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Jesus said no. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient. He said no to Paul three times when Paul came to him. And it was because he had a reason for saying no. Sometimes you have to just say no. I'm going to leave that right there with you this morning. I'm so glad and thankful that you tuned in today. I'm asking your prayers as we board this plane. Uh, we're going to be boarding the plane in the next couple of hours, going to Houston to uh, eulogize our uncle, uh, Dave Botts in Houston. we like to say thank you to all of you that bless our ministry. If you like to bless us today, you can go to G-Box Ministries. 
at uh, Cash App at Gbox Ministries, all capital letters. Put the dollar sign first, or you can go to Zelle, uh, Gbox2 at Verizon.net. You can bless us that way. And also, you can contact us at Gbox uh, Ministries, 5762 Lincoln Avenue, number 315, Cypress, California, 90630. We're asking your prayers as we make our way. Pray for the Box family and the Jacksons family as we make our way to Houston. May God please uh, keep you is our prayer. we like to say thank you. And uh, thank you for uh, the fellowship for all of you. Uh, we just want to say thank you. And may God keep you until next Sunday. And uh, before we leave, we like to say, if you like to uh, accept Christ as your Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner, and I need you to save me. Father God, I, I, I love you. I know you are the Christ. Father, I, I, I come right now as humble as I know how. I need you to save me. Come into my heart right now. Father God, I know that you died on the cross for my sins, and you rose again, and you got out the grave on the third day with all power in your hand. Come into my life right now. Jesus, save me. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. I want to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, you are saved. And don't let nobody tell you different. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Until we meet again, may God bless you.